John. Yes. Tell me about when um, first moving here as a, a young kid, you moved to this area. Yeah, we had a dairy farm in Roselawn. Then they moved out here on Hampton Mason, the 240 acre dairy farm up there. Three houses, my two uncles were involved. And uh, so it was a dairy farm? There. So you, they ran the dairy farm here too? Yeah. Okay. We ran the dairy farm here. What was the dairy call? Was it just. We didn't call it nothing. Okay. <laughs> But you had cows? Yes. All right. And yeah. 240 acres, you yes. said? Yes. Wow. What's there now? Uh, houses. That's uh, Greenbrier Subdivision. I don't know which. In front of Liberty School over okay. there is the old house that's still there. Okay. That's where my grandpa and one uncle lived. Wow. There. Okay. So how old were you then? Six years. Six years old. What was it like growing up on a farm in this, uh, this area? Oh, it was fun. Uh, had a lot of work to do because we had a big garden. And, that, and of course, I ended up with enough brothers and sisters to help. There were seven of us all together. Okay. So. All right. So your family has pretty long roots here, and I think much of your family still lives in the area, right? Yes, they do. Okay. So, but much different than when you first came here. Right. Right. Where did you go to school? I went to St. Michael's first four years and then went to Liberty. Okay. And I went my freshman year to Union High School because they were bringing Lakota in and I didn't want to go. Liberty went to uh, Monroe at that time. Okay. So I went to being, I was on the line and uh, then I was third class to graduate out of Lakota. Okay. Was um, back at that time, was there much difference between Liberty Township and Union Township? Did you all just kind of think of it as the same thing? No, it was about the same thing. Mm -hmm. I mean, most of it was farmland, all of it. And I bet there was a lot of uh, youthful shenanigans as a kid growing up oh, with no, all that land. Oh, no, we would have had not, none of that. <laughs> of course, the... Uh, Football teams and that, they had a problem because they were the, uh, this Keener had cows across the street from the school and they were the cowboys, you know, the country <laughs> That's boys. Funny. That's funny. Yeah. How big was your graduating class? Do you remember? 93. 93 kids. Yeah. That's unbelievable now, yeah. right? So you've seen a lot of change in the community, but you've lived here ever since, right? You yes. You didn't move away. No, I have not moved away. Okay. No. How about a lot of your family still here then too, right? All my family except my one sister, they just, her and her boyfriend just moved down to Florida. Okay. But the rest of them are here right. in the area. So you started working for the township first as a volunteer firefighter. So right. So when was that and can you tell me a little in bit? In 64, it was a year after they started the fire department. And uh, I worked at Crossroads store, which was in mod at the time, and she would let me go to day fires because we were short. A lot of times, maybe two guys would show up on a fire truck during the day. Okay. That's all we had. We, if it was a bigger enough fire, we had to call mutual aid. Okay. And, so that's interesting. You brought up mod because you're familiar with, so what did the mod area, what, what was that then? I mean, how can you compare with where that is now? It's there was a gas station there, a big house on the one corner, a camper place, uh, the old uh, railroad station was still there, and the house across the street where uh, State Farm is now was a three-story brick house where they, the railroad people would stay in the overnight in that in there. And uh, Crossroads store, there was a barber shop and a beauty shop attached to it. Okay. So. so for people who don't know, Maud now is where Walgreens is and the Splash and Dash. It's kind of that area, yes. Tylersville and Cincinnati Dayton Road, correct? Yes. Yes. Okay. It was a bustling little town, right? A little store and... Yeah, that's the only thing. Little stores out here. You had there, and there was two here in Old Westchester. Okay. 
All right. So that's, I mean, I, the 60s don't feel that long ago. <laughs> but they were. There was a very different community. Then. Oh, yes, so, it was. So what do you remember of old Westchester? I mean, that was really the first formal village in the township. But what, um, so there were a couple of stores you remember being in there? Oh, yeah. It was Ely's store. It's where, across from the pony keg there. Okay. Uh, it's a photo place now. And then uh, right here by the bridge, uh, I don't remember the name of the owner of the store. They had a small store there, too. Okay, okay. So as a, a young man, you started, you were working at the store in Maud there. Yes. And then um, they, you had an interest in becoming a firefighter and or participating in that, and you start to go on fire calls. So yes. Did you have to be trained, or you just kind of started? No, we had, we had training in that. Uh, every week, we would have training. Uh, usually Thursday nights were the training nights. Okay. And uh, eventually, three of my brothers were on the fire department, and my sister was a paramedic for a period of time. Okay. Then, okay. back then, they also had the ladies' auxiliary, which was the wives. My mom, she was into it all the time. And if we had a large fire, they would bring out drinks and food in that uh -huh. form. Okay. So it was really a family affair, the yes. fire department was, and everybody was committed to the work, and part of, it was part of community, right? That's right. Yeah. Did, um, so you uh, were a volunteer firefighter for how long? 21 years. Wow. So yeah. did you get paid per run, or? At first, we never got paid. Okay. It was supposed to be a dollar a year. Mm -hmm. but, uh, eventually, they started paying by run, and then officers got a little bit more, because I was one of the first of the two lieutenants on the squad when we started the life squad in 69. Mm -hmm. And then I went to a lieutenant in the fire department, and when I left here, I was a captain. One of the two, Bud Raff was the other one, of the last volunteer captains okay. that were here. All right. And I always um, think it's interesting, you know, because it's a very different community today, but when, how did you get notified of a fire? We had what they call plectrons in the house. That's the only way. Uh, later on, they did go to pagers when pagers came out. Okay. And then you could wear that and you could be anywhere. Okay. Uh, there was a siren on the back of Firehouse 1 here because... Uh, Pete Stewart and Bob McGuire, who worked for the township and the cemetery, and that uh, the siren would go off when there was a run, and they were involved. And Pete was the chief for a while, and Bob, he was the captain. Okay, all right. So Bob McGuire was a chief when, as a volunteer fire department? He's a captain. Oh, he was a captain. Yeah. Okay. So Jim Dethridge was the first full-time fire chief. Yes. But there was a chief before him. Yes. Okay. There were several. Uh, Dawkins was the first chief. Uh, trying to think the other. <laughs> Hugh Bellamy. Okay. Uh, Earl Wilcox. Okay. George Hall. All right. We're all chiefs. So do you remember when they broke ground on the, the first fire station over here? Oh, or, yeah. Yeah? Do you yeah. remember being there for that? I don't think I was there, but okay. I remember. It was a big deal, I would imagine. Yeah. So there was this, the one here on Cincinnati Dayton Road, and then there was a fire station on John Road. Though. Yeah, but this was the first one. Okay. And we had two bays. There was a meeting room, small kitchenette, restrooms, and a storage room. That's all was okay. in the firehouse. Okay. And at the first part, it was just gravel out front in the driveway. They sank the tanker in at one time. <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> it grew, then firehouse two was the second one yeah. to go up. So did you, um, so, I mean, you came from a farming family. What made you start doing this or got you involved? Was it just because it was community or what? I mean, well, was it community a real goal? and farming was 
the expense anymore of farming uh, individuals. Uh, it was rough because my dad and them were the last ones to go on. Uh, my grandpa, he had come from Switzerland and they still had the farm spending the family over there for 300 years. Wow. So, wow. Yeah. That's interesting. So, um, but then, so firefighting was like a career. You knew, you, you figured you were going to go into firefighting and that was going to yeah. be your career. So, yeah. during your time as a firefighter, I didn't realize you were in the fire department so long, but are there memories? I mean, I'm sure you have tons of them, but are there a couple things you can share about big events or fires or? Uh, we had some big fires. Uh, barn fires were a thing back then. Uh, Highland Greens was a big fire we had. Uh, the swimsuit place up on 42, my one brother almost fell through through the basement. Mm -hmm. Well, there, it was a close call there. Mm -hmm. but, uh, There's a lot of attention now to firefighter safety, which of course yes. is so important, but back then I would imagine it was a little different. And yeah, it was a little many, different. Not as many rules and that kind of yeah. thing. So what kind, so you had gear, obviously you had some firefighting gear, but right. I imagine it was pretty simplistic. It was, it was good gear yeah. that we had. We had the hoods and that, and a lot of times we didn't have enough air mask, okay. you know, back then. Okay. Uh, we had the firemen's uh, association that would have fish fries and that to raise extra money to buy the gear and that. We had, um, we actually found a poster that is of a circus that was brought to town as a fundraiser. Yeah, we had department. a circus. Do you remember that? Yes, okay. I do. Okay, that's fun. So yes. it says at the PYO Fairgrounds. PYO. Where were the, fa were the fairgrounds where the baseball fields yeah, are? Yeah, where the baseball fields are. Okay, yeah. and it was a whole circus. Whole circus, the elephants and everything. That's funny. Yeah. That's funny. Um, so what was the fire truck like? I mean, was it like we picture we had fire a, trucks? We started off with a 55 GMC and a tanker, which was uh, a chassis with a old gas truck okay. tank on the back. Okay. That's what they started off with. Was it like we picture when we look at... Um, fire trucks from long ago that the firefighters were like hanging off the back and well yeah you could hang off the back you had a big step back here and you had the bar up here okay. that you could hang on all right and no uh, not much traffic to speak of so no there wasn't much traffic back about then getting around. All yeah. right. good deal so then when did you become a police officer uh they chief brown hired me as a police officer and sent me to the academy. I was the first one they ever sent to the academy in 84. Okay. And uh, I, before that, I had dispatched for several years. Okay. While I was on the fire department then. Okay. And, so uh, did we have a more formal dispatch center then at some yes. point during your career? Yeah. Yes. Well, when we started out, you had three dispatch. Okay. Uh, Roslo's, uh, Charlie Salzman had the hardware store where the piano place is now, and Oster's. And uh, there were several times that I stayed at the firehouse because all three of them had to be somewhere. And I dispatched from the firehouse. Okay. There. All right. So you had some experience doing that. Yeah. And then you just decided you thought law enforcement would be more more your thing, or you yeah. you said you were maybe as interested in being a paramedic. So right. yeah, okay. Right. So tell me about what the police department was like when you first joined the police department here. It was small. I think we had about 15, 16 guys at the time. Uh, they. Uh, we maybe have two to three guys out at night okay. on a call. Okay. That was it. Your backup was Butler County or Sharonville or Mason, whoever you were close to. Okay. 
okay. back then. In some ways, that sounds really quiet. In other ways, it sounds a little scary. <laughs> well, it wasn't as bad. We didn't have as many calls as they do now. Yeah. You know, because uh, I was known for my traffic. Okay. I did a lot of traffic. And uh, while there on the police department, I, in 95, I was promoted to sergeant. And I was over crime prevention the property room and traffic safety. And I also joined Hampton Safety Council. I was on the board there mm -hmm. for 15 years. And the Ohio Crime Prevention Association, I was on that board for 15 years mm -hmm. and served as president one year up there. Okay, so. all right. So um, we talked a, a minute just before we started about the big tornado that was such a huge story in the community and a big impact to the community. And I can't, uh, what year was that? That was? 74, I believe. That sounds about right. So what were you doing then? And Me and Chief Hall at the time were up in, up by Dayton looking at the new squad. Okay. And back then, we couldn't hear the radio. We didn't know nothing was going on. Wow. Well, it hit up there in Xenia, uh, and they were on our channel. We heard them. And we didn't pick up ours until we got back to about Monroe. Wow. And then wow. went down there. That's my first time using a bulldozer. John Keeter's bulldozer, I got to drive it, piling stuff up in the field over there. Mm -hmm. But uh, right. yeah, I spent four or five days out there helping. Okay. Then. All right. It was, um, you bring up the names like John Keener, and, and with your time here in the community, you really got to know a lot of those, um, yes. the old, you know, more founding kind of families of the community. And right. Many of them hung around for a long time. Yeah. Well, John Keener helped us when we came up. He, he uh, dug a pond for us. And if you, we had a bad snow that year. He was one of the ones that cleaned the roads okay. back then. Because right. Township really didn't have anything okay. at that time. Okay. So. What do you mean, remember of, of the trustees at the time? I mean, you worked for the township during a time of multiple trustees, right? I mean, yes, you know, I've had quite a few trustees. And I'm sure as a volunteer firefighter, you probably didn't have a lot of interaction with them, maybe, but at least not in an administrative way. But yeah. um, what kind of, what can you say about how the trustees were involved in the community, maybe, at that time? Most of them were. You always have one or two, maybe. We're questionable, but most of the time they were involved in the community because uh, they all lived out here, you know. They, they had served their own purposes. Right, right. So what, um, what was maybe the big thing you remember in the police department that happened? Um, I mean, it continued to grow, right? The police department had to continue to grow as the community grow, grew and all of that. But do you remember some pivotal point or something when it felt like, wow, there's just a lot of growth that the police department's changed so much from, from the police department I knew? Or was it all really gradual? It was always gradual. We, they only added a few each time they allowed them to go a little bit more. Mm -hmm. It was always a few. Okay. And I know, I still go over there all the time and meet the guys, go out to lunch and that. But uh, a lot of the new guys now, I don't know. <laughs> There's so many right? new ones. Yeah, sure. Yeah. Sure. I always think that what's always interesting about police and fire is it's a very family kind of thing, right? It's a family yes. of people that are committed to a certain kind of service. And well, my whole family and then my wife worked here mm -hmm. as administrative assistant to the service director. My daughter still works here as the finance. And the fire chief at the time I retired, he retired, was my cousin. So. <laughs> That's fun. Yeah, it's a and I had other cousins who were, one with Cincinnati, one with Evendale, and two of the fire department, uh, Northern Hills and that. Okay. 
Any good uh, police uh, stories you can tell from back when you were on patrol and there was only six of you out on the ro dirt roads of Westchester? Was One time I, a little kid, a neighborhood close to me, he was, had his bike with a wagon tied pulling his little sister down the road. And uh, I stopped him. I said, this is a little dangerous. You know, I untie that and pull it and go home. Well, I noticed he, he wet his pants. Oh, no. Oh, no. <laughs> but uh, it's funny. He was good at it. It was just something, trying to safety part, you know, because mm -hmm. my whole thing was safety, crime prevention, right. and that. It's hard for anybody today to really picture a little kid going down the street on his bike with a no. I don't a have a picture. Behind. Well, it's hard to imagine. Oh, it, yeah. With the way traffic and roads are here now, it's right. hard to kind of imagine a time when people right. would do that. But it really wasn't all that long ago. Oh yes. And I was known at the high school okay. for tickets because uh, Butler County led for a long time the number of juvenile fatalities out on the road. All right. so Why that's, would that have been? Why do you think? Uh, around 2000. Okay. And uh, we were putting Henry, the Greater Hamilton Safety Council, we did all the mock crashes and that right. at different schools. Right. Why do you think the youth fatality rate in crashes was so high here? Why do you think? Just the way they were driving. Yeah. They, nobody corrected them. More people, and maybe just the roads were yeah. different than what, you know, yeah. the change in the roads. Yeah. Huh. So you were with the police department how many years? 30 years. Okay, you retired in what year? 2015. So in total, you have 50-some years. 51 years. 51 years in here serving Westchester. Yes. And what can you say was the best part of your career, your most favorite part of career? Both of them. Yeah. I, I, I enjoyed both of them. Mm -hmm. You know, I didn't have too many problems. And uh, I treated everybody the way they wanted to be treated. You know, yeah. they wanted to get rough. Yeah. But most of the time I had no problems. Yeah. In, in um, something, I think, I, I know you in your career more in the whole public safety aspect, the safety education and that kind of thing. Right. You seem to really embrace that and enjoy that interaction with yes. the community that way. Yes. So was that, did you like that better than patrol or well, just different? Yeah. Different times, different? The chief asked me what I wanted to do in crime prevention. I said, I'm not too good going out and speaking in that. But I did it. It worked out fine. Yeah. So how many police chiefs did you serve under? Uh, Brown? Brown hired me. Then uh, John Bruce and Eric, Eric Niehaus and Joe Horzo. Okay. So you were still here when Joel was here. Yeah. Chief. Very good. Fire didn't have as, hasn't had as many chiefs in its, uh, uh, in we its had 60 about years. Five. Well, the, in the volunteer chiefs, yeah. Yeah. Full time in the chiefs. Volunteer. Yeah. volunteer, the full time was just one. Yeah, right. That's each the time. They stayed for a long time. <laughs> How about the. Um, so was Lynn Brown, he was an official full time police chief. Yes, he was. Oh, okay, so the department was the. The police department was always a full-time full police department, just had very it few It started people. out at part-time. Oh, okay. All right. 60-some. Uh, uh, Dan Snyder was on it. Uh, he's the one I remember. There was, they had about six or seven. Okay. Guys who were part time, and before that, they had a constable out here, oh. uh, Fisher. Okay. He had his own cruiser, and that he was dispatched by the state patrol. And I tried to get on with him, but the township trustees thought I was too young. Okay, so, so how old would you have been? How Eighteen. Old? Eighteen. Yeah. Yeah. Eighteen. So. But he used to be the only one out here. Okay. And then you had the Butler County Sheriff. And, you know, 
Back then, they only had three cars in the whole county at night. So, <laughs> different place. Yeah, different place. So you've lived in this area, worked in this area since you were six years old. Right. Did um, are you glad your your parents made the choice to move here, or I mean, you know, yeah, obviously you think you've been happy with your living in this area. Your whole family settled here. Yeah. Yeah. It, it was nice up here. We had play room to play around. And that and, uh, I enjoyed going out plowing, discing, doing that type of work on right, the farm. Right. I worked until I graduated, then I went crossroads there. Mm -hmm. Then I worked for Cisco Foods for 15 years. Wow, how could you have so many years in so many places? Well, that's <laughs> when I was a volunteer fireman. Uh, I made me work four, four years up here okay. at crossroads. So where was Cisco at the time? Down the Evendale. Oh, they were there, okay. Yeah, they're right. the same place. Do you remember, so, um, like all the paper mills, all that stuff was probably gone by the time you guys came here. Over in uh, Off of Rialto. Off of Rialto area where all those paper mills were gone yeah. by that time. Yeah. yeah. So it was mostly just farming here. Yeah, just just farming. Okay, and yeah. then small stores and shops to support Then the you families. had the Windish Farm and that with the horses and that. Uh, back then, they had the horses around, right. and the Rosselos, yeah. and they had the yeah. their big farm. So, huh. and yep. John Keener, so the prominent names that we all still hear about today. Oh yes, yeah, yeah, yes. Okay.